Many of the predators fetched on to catch a predator were dangerous, but none pale in comparison to this individual. Imagine a man, a former veteran hoping to protect and serve his community by becoming a police officer. But behind the facade of horror lurked a sinister side. Stephen Buchanan's twisted path collided with fate as he arrived at a sting house eager to meet a 13-year-old girl named Bailey. While meeting up with a minor is bad enough, what makes Buchanan stand out so much from the other predators featured on To Catch a Predator is the suspicion of law enforcement and fans of the show alike, and Stephen potentially intended to kill the decoy. Brace yourself as we dive deep into Buchanan's explicit chat logs and the items that were found in his car after he was apprehended by law enforcement. Items he likely could have intended to use on Bailey. The disturbing details will send shivers down your spine. Before we continue, make sure to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe with the notifications if you want us to update you on the current whereabouts of other people featured on To Catch a Predator. Now back to the video. Becoming involved in the sting, 27-year-old Army veteran Stephen Buchanan wanted to become a Stratford police officer and was even listed at number 100 on the department's hiring list. His chat logs were sexually charged towards his 13-year-old decoy. Let's take a look at some of those messages now. After speaking to the decoy for a little bit, this is where he took the conversation. Buchanan texted, What's the oldest guy you've been with? The decoy replied with, My ex is 18, but he was 17 when we broke up. Buchanan replied, Sleep with him? The decoy replied, Yeah. Buchanan responded with, So you're not a virgin. The decoy then said, Don't judge, smiley face. Then Buchanan said this, I'm not, that's hot. As sick as these chat logs are, once Stephen drove over to the sting house, what was discovered in his car will make the entire situation even sicker. Prior to arriving at the sting house, Stephen then spoke to who he thought was a 13-year-old girl and wanted to do this with her. What's up? Not much, just working on some homework. <laughs> so looking forward to me showing you around tonight? Yeah. Alright, uh, what time? I don't know. My mom's supposed to get out of here like around five, so I can either text you or kick you. All right, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Now what are we gonna do? All right. I'll show you around. I'll show you like uh like some places in Fairfield and show you uh places in like Bridgeport and stuff like that and whatnot. Okay. Steven was featured on the Hanson vs. Predator era, where the sting operation took place in 2016. The investigation had Chris Hansen join forces with the local police department in Fairfield, Connecticut to combat the grave issue of individuals seeking illicit encounters with underage adolescents. Employing a meticulous sting operation, these collaborative efforts aim to apprehend potential child predators. This is where Chris confronts these individuals to shed light on their deplorable acts and try to understand what goes on in their sick minds. Upon arriving at the sting house to pick up his 13-year-old date, Buchanan's claim of carrying a gun initially made the decoy and the entire team hesitant to let him inside. This put the crew in a very dangerous situation, where the life of the decoy could be directly at stake. When watching the footage, you can even see Ron Knight, the chief security of the show, ready to intervene with his own firearm if Steven tried anything. This was a great call by the team, considering what was found in Buchanan's car. More on that later. After demonstrating that Steven did not possess a firearm, the decoy felt comfortable enough to invite Buchanan inside. This is where Steven differentiates himself from most other people featured on the show. Despite the decoy's obvious reservations, Steven persisted in trying to lure her into his car, offering to show her around Fairfield. Steven kept getting denied by the decoy over and over again. He suggested going for a walk in the rain and even attempted to persuade her to see a movie. However, she resisted, citing concerns about being recognized by her friends at the theater. These are all major red flags. In fact, we cannot express in words how dangerous this behavior is. Let's recap. Steven, a 27-year-old man, talking to what he thinks is a 13-year-old little girl, is trying to get her away from the safety of her house in the middle of the night. Had the sting operation not taken place, it's our personal opinion that he would have done something horrible to a child. More on what he could have potentially done later. Just as Buchanan seemed determined to pursue his disturbing agenda, Chris Hansen had had enough and confronted him and invited Buchanan inside. Surprisingly, he complied and entered the sting house, knowing he was busted. While speaking to Hansen, Buchanan claimed that he only wanted to show the girl the sights of Fairfield and warn her against the dangers his cousin had experienced, and Buchanan attempted to defend his actions as a misguided attempt to protect her. She did the same thing. She, an older person. An older person came around. over and yeah. showed your 13-year-old around town. And what happened in that case? 
She got assaulted. She got assaulted. Obviously, this is either all a flat out lie or some kind of weird projection tactic that he used and tried to worm his way out of the confrontation with Chris. Buchanan even revealed aspects of his background, including working as a maintenance worker for a cable television business and driving a truck for the National Guard. I was in the army. And I would, I don't like people doing that. You're a former military and still in the National Guard, right? Yes. That you were going to come over and show this 13 year old girl around. He asserted that his time in the military, particularly his service in Iraq, had profoundly impacted him, leading to a change in his behavior. However, Hansen, while acknowledging Buchanan's struggles, found it difficult to comprehend how he could justify his attempted sexual assault on a minor. Buchanan went on to claim that his actions were a result of his post-traumatic stress disorder, stating that he had never groomed children online until his experiences in Iraq. I haven't been the same since I deployed to Iraq. Iraq. It's tough, tough stuff over there. I haven't been the same. However, Hansen then revealed the evidence of Buchanan's prior interactions with Brittany, undermining his assertions that this was his first offense. Buchanan's attempts to prove his innocence by showing texts that suggest he only wanted to hang out were met with skepticism from Hansen, who pointed out the immediate focus on getting the girl into his car upon their initial meeting. Now that Buchanan's pitiful excuses are out of the way, let's talk about what he had in his car. As the confrontation intensified, Buchanan admitted to having a gun in his truck, which was later discovered during his arrest. While a gun might not be very much to panic about considering he served in the military, these next items will make you feel sick. The search of his vehicle revealed a camera, duct tape, a knife, and a package of condoms. If this doesn't scream potential serial killer, I don't know what does. Since this is YouTube, we're not allowed to go into detail about what we think his plans were, if there was a real 13-year-old child there instead of a sting operation, but I'm sure you have a good idea of what he wanted to do. Overwhelmed with emotion, Buchanan wept uncontrollably during the journey to the police station, even receiving a comforting gesture from one of the officers. Following his arrest, Buchanan faced charges, such as attempted criminal second-degree sexual assault, attempted risk of an injury to a minor, and attempting to entice minor into an obscene act. Despite initially pleading not guilty, he eventually pleaded guilty to all three felony charges. During the sentencing process, Buchanan's attorney, Michael A. Fitzpatrick, argued for treatment rather than imprisonment highlighting the attention he sought from the decoys as a result of lacking it in his life. Bill O'Brien, his former employer, also appealed for compassion, acknowledging that Buchanan had already faced significant consequences, including losing his job and breaking up with his girlfriend. Luckily for the rest of society, Judge Robert Devlin recognized the severity of Buchanan's actions. Despite considering his military service, Judge Devlin emphasized that Buchanan believed he was grooming two 13-year-old girls and engaging in explicit discussions. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Judge Devlin sentenced Buchanan to eight years in prison, with three years to be served before eligibility for parole. In addition to imprisonment, he also imposed a 10-year probation period and mandated that Buchanan register as a sex offender for a decade. Now that we've seen the direct consequences of someone who decides to show up to try to meet a 13-year-old, let's see where Stephen Buchanan is today. If you haven't already, make sure to like the video and hit the bell if you want more in-depth videos on where the people featured on To Catch a Predator are now. Following his release from prison in January 2019, Buchanan found himself navigating the challenges of rebuilding his life, despite the consequences he faced and the impact on his personal relationships. Buchanan expressed remorse for his actions, claiming to have gained a new outlook on life as a result of his arrest. He sought to use his experiences to assist other soldiers dealing with similar issues related to PTSD. Speaking of Buchanan's PTSD, a member of his unit came out after the show aired and alleged on Reddit that Buchanan was never in any combat, essentially dismantling his entire claim of having PTSD. When originally confronted by Hansen by saying, Stephen Buchanan, this took me a good hour of searching through old pics from Iraq, but I finally found it. I served with this turd. Yes, he did deploy to Iraq, but no, he did not see any combat. He doesn't have PTSD. He sat his ass on the fob all day tinkering with this BS, zero missions. In the same Reddit post, the man who claimed to have been in the same unit as Steven had this to say about his behavior pre-Sting. He was very, very awkward, gave off a weird vibe. The sad thing is, he was the only other guy I knew that was also from Connecticut when I stationed with him at Fort Hood. So I was like, oh cool, someone else from the same area. As soon as I started talking to him, he gave me very awkward vibes, very socially awkward demeanor. In 2022, Chris Hansen reached out to Buchanan through a phone call for his podcast. Surprisingly, it was Buchanan's father who answered the call, revealing that Buchanan now lived with his parents. 
expressing a desire to move forward and leave the past behind. Buchanan's father politely but firmly requested Hansen not contact them again. Buchanan's actions serve as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences that can arise from the intersection of predatory behavior and individuals with psychological issues. Let us know what you think Steven's intentions were with the decoy in the comments section.